Giardio's Institute for System Studies and Analyses, ESA, has handed over its indigenously developed electronic pilot simulation testbed to ADA in Bengaluru. This advanced software hardware platform enables virtual flight testing by replicating pilot behavior and real-world conditions, significantly cutting costs and timelines. It will validate flight control laws, integrate avionics, and enhance safety for upcoming fighters like Tejas MK2 and EMCA. With over 85% indigenous content, the system strengthens India's aerospace self-reliance and accelerates next-gen fighter development. Zen Technologies has launched India's first AI-enabled fast attack craft simulator to boost naval training and readiness. Developed by its subsidiary ARI Simulation, the platform offers realistic ship handling, navigation, and combat drills without costly live exercises. Featuring immersive 360 degrees visuals, motion platforms, haptic weapon controls, and adaptive AI scenarios, it enhances crew coordination and response to threats like drones and piracy. Cutting training costs by up to 70%, the simulator strengthens self-reliance and positions Zen as a global leader in naval trainers. Larson and Tubro and Bard Electronics Limited have partnered to support India's Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft Program. Combining Elanti's aerospace expertise with Bell's defense electronics capabilities, the consortium will respond to the Aeronautical Development Agency's expression of interest. Building on their contributions to the Tejas program, the collaboration aims to deliver advanced technologies for the Indian Air Force, boosting national security, self-reliance, and India's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat in defense. India is setting up the Integrated Defense Research Altitude Test Facility at Cholakere, Karnataka, led by DRDO's GTRE, to be operational by 2028. This rupees 1,600 crore facility will enable high-altitude testing of indigenous jet and helicopter engines, including those for the AMCA program, under simulated real-world conditions. By reducing reliance on foreign facilities, it will cut costs, avoid delays, and boost India's push for self-reliance in advanced aeroengine development. House Nashik facility, which has produced over 220 Su-30 MKIs, needs only minor upgrades to begin assembling Russia's Su-57E stealth fighters, potentially within a year of a contract. House Karaput plant will also manufacture AL-41F1S engines domestically, ensuring deep technology transfer. India is considering buying 36 to 40 jets directly, with more to be built locally, boosting IF strength until AMCA arrives. The 7 to $10 billion deal could expand to 126 jets, achieving up to 80% indigenous content. India is set to gain nuclear-powered aircraft carrier technology within 7 to 10 years, a major boost to its naval power. BARC's proven 190-megawatt submarine reactors could be adapted, with two units powering a planned 75,000-ton carrier by 2040. The Navy also aims to integrate electromagnetic aircraft launch systems for advanced jets and drones. Though costlier, nuclear carriers offer unmatched endurance and reach, seen as vital for countering China's growing fleet and ensuring India's blue water dominance. India will procure 87 male drones worth rupees 20,000 crore to meet urgent operational needs while continuing its Archer NG and Tapas UAV programs. The decision ensures immediate surveillance and strike capabilities highlighted during Operation Sindor as indigenous drones are still years from readiness. With a long-term demand of 350 to 400 drones, this dual approach balances imports with domestic development. The 60% indigenous content mandate and unified control systems aim to strengthen India's self-reliant UAV ecosystem.
India's Tejas MK2 fighter, developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, is surpassing expectations with a potential maximum takeoff weight of 18 tons, above its original 17.5 ton design. Built with advanced composite materials, the MK2 offers superior payload, fuel capacity, and durability compared to older jets like the Jaguar. Powered by the GEF 414 engine, it will carry advanced weapons, sensors, and ASA radar. For prototypes will validate performance by 2028, with production from 2031. The MK2 strengthens India's Atmanirbha Bharat push, complements the AMCA program, and positions India as a key player in next-gen fighter technology. Dassault Aviation has offered to fully manufacture Rafale fighter jets in India, making the country a global hub for production and exports. The plan includes assembly at DRL Nagpur, indigenous fuselages from TSL, and local Safran M88 engine production, with MRO support. Tailored Rafale F-4 jets, for the IF and Navy, will feature India-specific enhancements, Astra and Rudram missiles, and future upgrades like manned unmanned teaming, and a 120 kN engine. Production could begin within three years, delivering 20 jets annually. This offer strengthens India's MRFA bid, addressing the IF squadron shortage, and boosting defense self-reliance. India is in advanced talks with Russia to buy two squadrons of Su-57E stealth fighters and assemble more locally at HAL, but analysts note, the IF may use them mainly for suppression of enemy air defenses, rather than stealth missions. This shift reflects doubts about the jet's radar cross-section, estimated at 0.1 to 0.5 meters square, far higher than the F-35. Instead, the IF values its heavy payloads, long-range missiles like the R-37M, and strike power, echoing how the Su-30 MKI evolved into a mini-bomber. Critics warn of over-reliance on Russia, and question its true fifth-gen credentials. That's all for today, hope you liked this video. Please like, share and subscribe, for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.